This is a radio control car built out of Lego bricks. Well, it's not technically 100% Lego, but more on that later. And it was designed with one clear goal, beat the world's fastest Lego car record. But to understand how it ended up here, we need to travel back some months ago. Alright, so step one in the building process was obviously having all the components needed. Since Lego Motors and even their alternatives are too weak and slow for this ambitious project, I decided to do some investments in proper third-party RC stuff. Thankfully, Banggood reached out to me and sent me these two color variants of the awesome Flysky FS GT3C transmitter and receiver combo to promote their site. As you can see, it's a quite versatile design. Before receiving the two transmitters, I bought this other receiver, also from Flysky, which has an integrated gyroscope sensor with active stabilization. This means it automatically centers the car to keep it in a straight trajectory. Unfortunately, even though both were from the same brand, the transmitter is quite old and was not compatible with this receiver or any other with similar characteristics. However, I already had a new Flysky transmitter for my other projects, which I could use to control the FS BS4 receiver. And guess what, I found out that this one didn't have the feature of adjusting the gyro, so the car wobbled uncontrollably. Finally, I ordered this external gyro on AliExpress, which had physical adjustment features and ended up working very well. Now that I've learned the lesson, if I started this project again, I would consider the Flysky FS GT5 as the high-end option or the Dumbo RC X6 FG as a cheap alternative, both of which come with a receiver with an integrated gyroscope and adjustment options. For further information, I will leave all the links in the description. Moving on to the steering, I bought this gig servo compatible with the standard RC 3-pin connector. To propel the car, I bought these two brushless 700 kV Outrunner motors and two 50 amperes electronic speed controllers. It's very important that they are bidirectional to be able to use the motors as brakes. To power everything, I bought this 1800 mAh for air slipo battery. This means it has 14.8 volts. Last but not least, I bought the speedometer, since it's one of the best solutions to measure precisely the speed of your RC car because it uses GPS and GNS satellite technology. At first, I ordered one on Aliexpress, but since it never arrived, I placed a dispute to get the money back and I ordered the same model on Banggood, and this time, it arrived correctly. The total budget spent was 221 euros, this without taking into account the investments in a proper microphone, a 360 camera, two studio light panels, hiring people to shoot the drone scenes, not to mention all the Lego pieces that broke along the way. So, if you are enjoying the video, please consider subscribing and giving thumbs up, because this will help me to continue bringing this type of content. Ok, so, step 2 was the design. While I waited for the pieces to arrive, I designed the car in studio software by Brickling. The design is centered around maximum performance. For that, it had to be extremely simple to minimize possible errors, and very resistant to survive the speed runs. First off, I attached the motors directly to the suspension with screws, since the LEGO transmission would probably break apart at these speeds and torque. To attach them to the wheels, I had to make this custom plate with AutoCAD software. Next up, I cut the motor cables and the plastic protection of the ESCs to solder them. Then, I attached the ESC to the body and soldered the T-plug connector compatible with the battery. Since each motor must have its own speed controller, I had to somehow make them throttle simultaneously. With the previous transmitter, I could configure this digitally, but this one doesn't have this option, so I had to do it physically. This means literally wiring the two signal and ground cables in a single connector. Then, I attached a radio receiver with double-sided tape. 
Last but not least, I connected the gyro sensor to the receiver and the servo to the gyro sensor. I fired it up and after some calibrations and matching the channel directions, it was time to do a first test. As you can see, it seems to be working fine so far. I even tested it on rough terrain. Until eventually this happened. It turns out that the tires weren't secured enough. This caused them to get out often. So to fix it, I decided to glue the tires to the rims. And by the way, the car has double wishbone suspension front and rear, which works thanks to a push road mechanism. The steering consists in this rack connected to the servo, which provides a smooth and responsive control. As you can see in this clip, when the car has the gyro sensor disactivated, it easily loses control, and it would have been a matter of time to break it apart. Keeping it under control is crucial at high speeds, since a small change can lead to a catastrophe. In fact, I would say that at this point is what limits how fast the car can go. That's why it was my main focus, where I put it the most effort. Now that the car is working, let's take a look at which speed it has to pass to break the world record. The previous speed record was set on 2018 by RC Depot at 81 km per hour. Donut Media also set the record for the world's fastest Lego Bugatti at 41 miles per hour. You may argue that those are not legitimate because all the motors and electronics are not Lego. Then, from this point of view, the fastest 100% genuine Lego legitimate record would be 34.8 km per hour set by Technic Samsi on 2017. Blash from Racing Brick achieved 41.1 km per hour using Buis modules, which aren't technically LEGO either. Either way, I prefer allowing higher performance third-party components to reach the limits of physics with LEGO bricks and see how far they can go. In conclusion, to be the fastest in the world, the car needs to pass 81 km per hour. Let's see if it can break this mark. I was quite lucky to find this location to do it, since it's not easy to find a place with lots of space and a smooth floor. Actually, it wasn't the third attempt, but with a bit of patience, the car ended up passing the goal. However, I thought I could push it a bit further. This is the maximum speed I could achieve, since the next day I tried again and crashed dramatically. Here's the recorded GPS data on the computer visualizer. Anyway, I'm quite happy with the results and I've had a great time working in this project. Achieving this goal took a lot of failures. I had to overcome a lot of problems, from the long shipping times of AliExpress, buying components that later didn't work, or designing a car from scratch capable of breaking the world record. But I have good news for you, if you want to build this project by yourself, you won't have to face the same troubles as I did, since I've left all the links in the description of the components that ended up working well, and I've carefully prepared a step-by-step 98-page -step long premium building instruction guide available on Rebricable. This is a great way to support this channel and also the Rebricable community, and you even get a valuable return. I've placed some random letters along the video, like this one that if you put together, you can use as a promo code to get 15% off of the instructions. Finally, if you like this type of projects, you can follow me on Instagram and Rebricable to stay informed about the latest advancements.
I'm Maria Blancafort and I hope you enjoyed this video, got inspired or perhaps have learned something new. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.